Hey everyone, it's Caitlin Cahill, The Geek You Need, and today in this video I'm going to show you how to create a transparent stroke uh, or border around your text. So in this example that I'm going to create today, you can see that I have my text and then there is a transparent stroke around the text um, between the text and the drop shadow. This effect can be applied to any shape in Affinity. It doesn't have to be text, um, but I think it's a nice, easy way to elevate your text designs by adding just a simple transparent stroke around your text. And again, because it's transparent, when you export it as a, a PNG file or as a vector file, it will print nicely on things like uh, t-shirts that may have different colored backgrounds. So you don't have to change the stroke for each different t-shirt that you'll be printing on. So let's dive in and get started. So to begin with, let's add our text to our design. So to do this, we're going to select the artistic text tool, which is on the sidebar here near the bottom with the A inside the box. You can change your font and size here up at the top. You can also do that after you have typed your text. I can already see that's going to be too big, so I'm gonna change it down. And then by selecting the move tool, which is the black arrow at the top left of the toolbar, I can then go over here on the right of the top toolbar, click align center, and a line middle to put it in the middle of my document. I can resize the font um, by clicking and dragging the corners. And if I hold down the command key on a Mac or control on a PC, I can change the size of the text from the center. So now we need to add an element behind the text that we're going to add the transparent background to. You can do this if you're putting text over a shape, or in this case, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna add a copy of the text as a drop shadow and then add the transparent outline to separate the text from its drop shadow. So now that I have my text, I need to go up here to layer and convert to curves. Now, once you've done this, you will not be able to edit the font. So you want to make sure that you have the font looking the way you want before you convert it to a curve. So now that you have your text as a curve, you're going to want to make it one single layer. So you can see over in our layers panel, when we converted the text to curves, it created a separate curve layer for each individual letter. And we want it to be one word. Uh, this is especially essential for a script font like this, where the letters are connected. Otherwise, the stroke that we add around it will add around each individual letter instead of the whole word. So to put it back together as one single word, you'll want to select all of these curved layers in this group and then up in your top toolbar you're going to click the add button and that will combine all of those curves into one layer. So now that we have our text layer we want to add a background element for the transparent outline. Uh, so I'm just going to make a copy of this layer and I'm going to do that really quickly by doing the command J command which just makes a copy of that layer, which is nice because it keeps it lined up in the same position. Clicking on the layer below, which is our drop shadow, I'm going to pick a new color for my drop shadow. And you can't see it yet because it's still behind the word. I'm going to go back to my move tool, which is that black arrow in the upper left there. Now you can click and drag if you want. If you want to be more precise, I would recommend holding down the shift key and using your arrow keys to move your drop shadow to where you want it to be. So for example, I'm holding down the shift key. I'm now gonna go left and down until I have it the distance that I want from my text. And you can change um, that later if need be. So now at the top, I'm going to add a stroke to my top layer. So with my top curve selected, I'm going to go to the stroke panel and you can see I have no stroke yet, so I'm going to click Solid Line Style. And then, so that I can see it, I want to change the stroke color over here. So you can see the front is my fill color, and this back is the stroke color. So I'm going to double click on that, and I'm going to change it to white so I can see where the stroke is going. 
Back in my stroke panel, I'm going to adjust the size of my stroke. As you can see, that is way too big. And then I also want to put it on the outside of my text. Now I like that size for the stroke, but I do want to go back to my drop shadow here and move it out just a little bit more. So now that I have my drop shadow placed where I want it to be, I need to subtract the stroke from my drop shadow. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back to my top layer of text and then I'm going to go to my layer menu and I need to expand the stroke. And what that does is make the stroke its own curved layer. Now this next part is optional, but I find it is helpful, especially if you're doing this to create a cut file for, um, for example, cutting vinyl for a t-shirt. So what I often do is then I'll make a copy of my text layer, which is this black layer here. And I'm going to select both the copy of my text and the stroke, and I'm going to add them together. So now this top layer is a combination of my text and the stroke. With that layer selected, I'm going to hold down the command key. You can also, if you need to, you can move that layer. You don't have to, but you can move it above the drop shadow and use the shift key instead if you prefer. But I'm going to select these two layers. And you want to make sure that the layer with the stroke is above your drop shadow layer. And then press the minus or the subtract tool. What this is going to do is it's going to subtract that top layer from the bottom layer. So now you can see I have a transparent stroke around this text. So if I go back and I add a new shape, So now anything that I add behind that text, you can see that the outline is transparent and will show anything in the background. Um, similarly, if I export it as a vector file uh, for cutting machines or to print on a t-shirt, um, that will be transparent. And so it'll show whatever the background that you're printing on, whether it's colored paper or t-shirt. Um, there won't be any ink there. It looks white because I have a white background, but you can see that it is transparent um, between the text and the drop shadow. I think it's a really uh, nice effect to just quickly elevate your des simple designs, especially for t-shirts and other things that you're printing on colored backgrounds. I hope this was helpful. Let me know uh, what you think in the comments and anything else you'd like to learn in the Affinity Suite.